So the next step in prepping the engine for removal out of the vehicle is to remove this cooling crossover hose, the fan shroud, and a lot of these front accessories so I can lift the engine transmission up and out of the car. I'll tackle this upper coolant hose, which is attached with this hose clamp and this hose clamp, and I'll take it out of the car. That is a lot of corrosion. There is one small Phillips head bolt underneath here that holds the timing cover onto the engine. I'll have to remove that to get this metal thermostat housing off. You can remove the bolt with an 8 millimeter socket. Once that bolt is off, this coolant hose will be freely able to move. And I'll remove the bottom hose clamp with the flathead screwdriver. Once that lower coolant hose has been removed, you can freely take this flange out of the car. The next logical thing to remove out of the car will be the fan. Once the fan's out, I can take the fan shroud out and hopefully get this whole front area cleaned up. All the bolts around the fan are 10 millimeter. And now that all four nuts have been removed, you can take the fan right off. Now unfortunately the fan won't fit because the shroud's in the way, but if you take both of them out at the same time, it'll fit. The fan shroud bolt is also 10 millimeters. And there is the stock fan removed. The shroud just fits into some slots on the bottom and you can just pull it right up out of the engine bay. Now that this front of the engine's all exposed, we'll be able to a lot easier get the belts off and get a lot of the other accessories off. Since I removed the fan, that was the only thing keeping this pulley on, so I can just slip it right off. And you can just see how old and tattered this belt is from sitting. Since I'm already near it, I'll remove this coolant flange so that I have a lot more room on this side of the engine bay. I'll try to take off this belt so I can get the entire accessory bracket off of the engine. Since the coolant flange doesn't seem to want to be moving, there are actually two bolts holding the flange into the car. They're both 10 millimeters and I'll just be removing them. Well, I took one side off the coolant flange and antifreeze seems to be leaking out. So I'll just put this back on and hold it there until I can drain the antifreeze out. Now would be a good time to remove the alternator from the engine bay. Both bolts on the alternator are 12 millimeters. Unfortunately, the rear bolt will have to be accessed with a wrench. There is one more bolt on the front of the alternator that is the bracket that holds it to the car. Now that all the bolts are removed, we should be able to move the alternator right out of the car. And I think I've gotten it stuck. So a few taps with the hammer should loosen it right up. The alternator has some electrical connections on the back and I'll be sure to mark the location of all these before I remove it out of the car permanently. The last thing to remove before I can get the entire, the entire assembly cover off is this last belt attached to the power steering pump. Now I'm going to be replacing the belts anyway so I'm just going to cut the belt. So the pliers aren't working so I'm just going to use this razor blade to cut the belt. Look how crunchy that is. And off it comes. So now the next thing I'm gonna to try to remove is the crank pulley, which has a rather large nut that I can't really see what it is. So I'm just gonna start feeling around for different sockets and see which one will fit. 
So after many minutes of digging, it is in fact a 22 mil. Sometimes I forget how stubborn these crank bolts are. I'll put the car in first gear and try to do it again. Now that the car is in first gear, let's try this one more time. Duh! Not budging. I got my super long breaker bar and hopefully now it'll come loose. Ah, oh, I feel it getting free. Ugh. The crank bolt is now free and I'm pulling it off. Now with the crank bolt free, I'm gonna try to wiggle the harmonic balancer off the car. I doubt it's going to move because of how long it's been seized on here. I'll have to probably use a puller. So I've mounted the puller onto the crankshaft and the purpose of the puller is since the harmonic balancer and the crankshaft are keyed, it's a friction fit so it won't come off easily. So if I use a puller, it'll hopefully be able to pull the harmonic balancer right off. I have a 14 millimeter socket on the end of the puller and I'll just be able to turn it with a ratchet. And already it's starting to move. So in a previous clip, I removed the harmonic balancer, and now we just have a lone crank bolt sitting where the harmonic balancer will go. Next, I'll be removing this upper, this lower coolant hose and separating it from the vehicle, and then I'll be tackling the exhaust. First, I'll remove this coolant flange to separate it from the thermostat housing. I really dislike this type of clamp, so I'll be replacing it with traditional hose clamps. Next, I'll be removing all of the bolts on the thermostat housing, which are all 12 millimeters. That last bolt will need a wrench to access. I just realized that if I'm going to take the engine out of the car, I can do it much easier with the engine on a stand. So I'll just leave this just as it is for now. The first thing I'll do is remove all the bolts that hold this heat shield on the exhaust crossover tube. They're all 12 millimeters. I'll try the other, side, try the other side because, this, because side this side really doesn't really want to budge. budge. So it turns out this flange actually has six bolts holding it onto the exhaust manifold. So rather than mm, take all of these off, I'll just be disconnecting it down near the bottom. The next thing I'll be removing is not because I need to, but because I want to. I want to inspect the timing belt of this vehicle. I don't know when it was last changed, if ever, and I'd really like to see the condition. It is held on with a bunch of 8 mil bolts. All right, it looks pretty good. The tension is, unfortunately, not that great. I feel my tensioner most likely has gone bad. Add that to the list of parts I need to buy for the Z. 
Fortunately, the gaskets on here seem to be in rather good condition. I'll be replacing them anyway, but at least I know that it kept the moisture from getting in the cams pretty much. This is the cam gear that concerns me. It's kind of rusty, but it does seem to look quite strong still. I'm not really too concerned about it. My main concern is how much deflection is in this belt at idle. It just seems that the tensioner has completely failed at doing its job or the timing has jumped or stretched or something is wrong at least, which is why this car doesn't really like the hot start. The last thing really holding the engine in the car is the power steering pump because the power steering pump is connected to the rack. Once I disconnect the power steering pump, I'll disconnect the motor mounts and then I'll be ready to take the engine out of the car finally. But first I'll have to remove this coolant overflow tank because it's really in the way. It is held on with two 10 millimeter bolts. And just like that, the overflow tank comes right out. Next, I'll move the electrical connection from the power steering pump. The next thing to do is to remove the two bolts that hold the power steering pump to the Z. They both hold down with a 12 millimeter. One is in the front, right down here, and one is in the back behind it. This coolant crossover pipe is really in the way. I'll try removing it. And it's off. The bolt of interest is right there. That is very loose. Just about finger tight. It is turning just so easily. I could use a lot more room. And this charcoal canister is held in with this long spring all the way around. I'll be removing it. Just like that, the spring is released and the canister can fall. The canister has these vacuum lines holding it to the car, most likely for emissions. I'll just be removing them so I can get the canister off the car. It took a lot of wiggling and maneuvering, but I got all the vacuum lines to come off the evap canister. Now that I've removed it, I can work on the car much easier. I have to remove the pulley off of the power steering pump so I can access the bolt behind it. So I've jammed this large screwdriver in to prevent the pulley from moving, and now I'm going to use a ratchet to take off the nut. It doesn't seem to want to be coming off. So it turns out behind the pump is just a stud. I will have to find out another way. So behind the power steering pump are two bolts that hold on this bracket. And once the bracket can be removed, then you can finally access the one bolt behind the power steering pump that will ultimately let us disconnect it from the car. So after some browsing on the forums, I found the last two bolts needed to remove was here here and here, which ultimately held this bracket to the block of the engine. Now that that's removed, the whole powering steering system has been removed from the car. Lastly, I'll have to drop the exhaust and then I'll be able to pull the engine transmission out of the car. So I removed the coolant crossover tube that used to be here. It was just two hose clamps, now this part is free. And now the radiator is able to be moved. I'll try to slide the whole radiator assembly out of the front of the car. Now since this car has factory air conditioning, I want to preserve the condenser in the front. And since I want to conserve it, I want to remove it carefully without damaging it when I pull the engine out. If I remove all this front area right here, it will be much easier to pull the engine. Underneath the car, there are two bolts that hold the evaporator in, the condenser in, up under here, and I'll be removing them to take it out. Both bolts under here fit in a slot right over there. They're both 10 millimeter. 
The next thing to take off is this bolt right here and this compression fitting. After that, I'll be able to remove the condenser completely from the car. This bolt is 12 millimeters. Compression fitting, I just took off with a couple of pairs of vice grips and now that's disconnected and this main line has been disconnected. The whole condenser is free to move. So there are three bolts that hold on the exhaust manifold to the exhaust downpipe. The last one actually took the longest, this little nut, because you have to end up moving the steering shaft to get to that nut. The other two bolts came out without difficulty, but unfortunately, I had to drop the entire steering column just to move it. Finally, we'll be removing the transmission bolts to connect the engine to the transmission, and that will be the last thing that joins these two together. So after about another hour of wrenching, I got all the bolts that hold the transmission to the engine and starter off, and next episode we'll be taking the engine out of the car. Thanks for watching.